In a ProPublica article that was released about a week ago, Cigna was found to deny hundreds of thousands of healthcare claims in a single month, spending about a second going over the claims to, den to deny payment to physician practices. Now, this impacts on your practice's ability to care for patients by flat out stopping payment for procedures you ordered or have performed. In this video, I'm going to discuss this article and how you can counter Cigna's strategy to deny timely and appropriate care to your patients by not paying claims. Now, those of you who are new, my name is John Lin. I'm a urologist in Gilbert, Arizona, also your humble host of the Thriving Urology Practice Facebook group, where we crowdsource practice management so solutions for everyone's benefit, and it's all for free. You know how I detest information behind paywalls. I want, to, I want to share information, good information, so that we can all benefit. As they say, rising tide lift all ships, right? All right, a little bit of context. Cigna is a healthcare, or it's a private healthcare insurance company that insures about 18 million people in the US. They hire a bunch of medical directors, physicians, who, who are supposed to look at claims and determine whether they are appropriate and make sure that they fit with the insurer's policies to then adjudicate to say, yes, we should pay for this claim or should not pay for this claim. They've learned long ago that when physicians submit a claim, if it's a low cost claim, they usually just say, okay, approve, we'll pay for it. But certain claims, certain high dollar claims, certain insurers are requesting additional information or simply flat out denying the claim and then rejecting the claim, sending it back to the medical practices. Cigna, in this article, denied over 300,000 claims in a two month period, spending approximately 1.2 seconds per claim to say, nay, we are not paying the claim. You may be wondering, how in the heck does this happen, right? That's it. for one physician, Cheryl Dopke, a Cigna medical director, she denied 60,000 claims in a month in 2022. How does this happen? Well, believe it or not, this system has been in place for over 10 years. Uh, physician Alan Mooney left practice and then he spent several decades advising insurers on how to wring savings out of insurance plans. He worked with notable insurers such as United, United Healthcare, also private equity firms such as Blackstone, and then subsequently Cigna. At Cigna, and I'll quote, Muni and his team created a list of tests and procedures approved for use with certain illnesses. The system would automatically turn down payment for a treatment that didn't match one of the conditions on that list. Denials were then sent to medical directors who would reject these claims with no review of the patient file. So that is what is going on. And let's look at this further. Cigna eventually designated the list PXDX, which is corporate shorthand for procedure to diagnosis. The list saved money in two ways. It allowed Cigna to begin turning down claims that it had once paid, and it made it cheaper to turn down claims because the company's doctors never had to open a file or conduct any in-depth review. They simply denied the claims in bulk with an electronic signature, essentially a click of a mouse. Quote, the PXDX stuff is not reviewed by a doc or nurse or anything like that. End quote, Muni said. The review system was designed to prevent claims for care that Cigna considered unneeded or even harmful to the patient. Muni said, the policy simply allowed Cigna to cheaply identify claims that it had right, it had a right to deny. Basically, 
if the diagnosis or in 2023, if the ICD-10 code did not match the procedure or the lab that was ordered or some imaging study, they automatically deny these claims. Consequently, this is what happens. Within the world of private insurance, Mooney is certain that the PXDX formula has boosted the bo corporate bottom line. It has, quote, undoubtedly saved billions of dollars, end quote, he said. That is what's going on. PXDX. So what happens? You deny all these claims, these, these insurers deny these claims, the insurers such as Cigna, who will deny hundreds of thousands of claims every single month, then the claims get back to the private practices or the practices or the hospital systems, whomever submitted the claim. Then what happens? These are called denials, claim denials. <laughs> this is what kills me. Cigna does not expect many appeals. In one corporate document, Cigna estimated that only 5% of people would appeal a denial resulting from a PXDX review. <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't even believe this. This is, this is just easy money for Cigna, right? They denied these claims. They sent, well, first of all, the claims currently are sent in electronically. You've got an ICD-10 or ICD-10s matching a particular lab study procedure. Cigna puts that claim against a list that they have, and if it doesn't match a diagnosis with that claim in that, in that procedure, in that procedure, if the procedure doesn't match the diagnosis, that matches on their, on their list internally, then they will simply deny that claim. So that is what is happening. What is so sad to me is that Cigna knew that 95% of these denials were not worked nor appealed. And that is what sickens me. What happens? What is going on with these practices that are not appealing these claims? So here are some of the things that you might want to consider doing when you receive one of these denials. Well, even before then, number one, you need to understand the payer policies and the rules. If you need it, if you need to, obtain prior authorization or predetermination before you perform the procedure or order the test. And if in imaging studies, you would simply submit the documentation and usually the imaging center will go and obtain the predetermination or prior authorization before they perform the procedure. Now, as you know, a lot of these payers will lie. They, they, what do they do? Deny, delay, and they simply lie when you try to get, obtain, uh, uh, obtain authorization or try to submit a claim. So, not surprising. If you understand the payer policies on what procedure matches with what diagnosis, then this shouldn't be an issue. Your claim should be easily submitted and adjudicated and paid on first pass. Once you have this dialed in, and, and for most urology practices, you're dealing with just a very small handful of diagnoses. Unless you're a big academic institution that sees a ton of variety, but even then, maybe 40, 50 diagnoses at the most. And then the list of procedures that you all do in labs and imaging studies that you order Come on, not that many. CT, KUB, MRI, right? PET scan. You, you should be able to figure out internally which payers will pay for what procedure using which diagnosis. Internally, you should have a, a way to keep track of that. And, and for most of us, that is fairly common sense. You got renal colic in a patient with history of stones. You order a non-contrast CT of the abdomen and pelvis, just making sure that you are using the correct ICD-10 diagnosis of N20.0 for kidney stone or flank pain. Matching the ICD-10 with the CPT will save you a lot of time and 
avoid you having to go through this denial process, the PXDX denial. Make it easy. As a physician, you want to make it easy for your coders or for your prior auth people. What I personally do is that not only do I include the, the ICD-10 diagnosis code for flank pain, if the patient has known history of kidney stones, I will also list the ICD-10 diagnosis of personal history of kidney stones. If the patient had actual kidney stones and were decided not to follow up with you, which is not uncommon for whatever reason, I will also include kidney stone. So now I'm working with three different ICD-10s to justify a CT of the abdomen and pelvis without contrast. Number one, flank pain. Number two, personal history of kidney stones. And number three, kidney stone. Once you submit that claim or submit that predetermination request or prior authorization request, your payer is going to look at that and probably using AI or computer, which is very simple, they'll say, yes, this is not a problem. We will authorize that without issue. So understanding payer policies and the rules and get the prior authorization and determination will help you avoid this PXDX denial trap. Second thing you want to do, 95% of these Cigna denials were not appealed. Denials need to be defended with timely appeals. And I'll say this again, denials need to be defended with timely appeals. I don't know how you are all doing your billing. If you are outsourcing your billing, you need to find out if these outsourced people are working these denials or are they simply writing it off? Meaning the insurance company says, hey, the claim is denied. Your billing company simply says, okay, great. We will just subtract that from our ledger and, not the, and the physician who performed the work will simply not be paid. So that's called writing off a claim. If you're outsourcing your billing, you better understand how the denials are being worked. And also, how are you tracking these de denials? How many of your claims are being denied by a particular payer? If a particular play play payer likes to play games and simply deny claims for no reason, which you have all seen, are you willing to continue to work with this payer? Or is it better for you to spend time helping those who are insured with a payer that is easier to work with. I hate to say it, we all have limited resources. You can't constantly deal with payers that are obtuse and are difficult to work with. I have a private payer that we are about to kick out of our roles. It's the largest private payer in Arizona because number one, it is absolutely nauseating and very difficult for us to even get to, to verify benefits, even before the patient is seen, it is very difficult for us to verify benefits. And they are one of the worst payers when it comes to procedures. And as a urologist, I perform a lot of procedures. And when I go back to try to negotiate with them, they said, nope, we're going to stick you at this lower pay. Now, if they paid well, then I can spend the time, put in the resources to deal with the headache. When they are high headache and one of the worst payers, unfortunately, I feel badly for those patients that insurance company insures. So how are you tracking these denials? How are you dealing with these denials? And how are you communicating with your internal billing staff or your outsourced billing staff on who are headache payers and how are they paying? Are you looking at a spreadsheet, looking at who are the good payers, who are the poor payers, who's paying above, who's paying below your norm? How are you communicating with your internal billing staff? Do you even know this information? Right? Very, very important. Communication is key when it comes to in the entire revenue cycle or any practice. I don't care if you're in private practice, solo practice, group practice, private equity owned, if you are in a hospital system, 
or if you are in a healthcare, large healthcare, regional healthcare system, you need to understand, you need to communicate with your coding and billing staff. And this communication does not just, oh, okay, talk to them once a year and that's it. This should be an iterative process. You have to constantly go back to them and they should feel comfortable coming to you to ask for clarification, to ask for additional information. And through that interaction with your coder and biller, that is how you can create an efficient revenue cycle management system in your practice. Constant communication. Lastly, just, be, just as there is a timely filing regulation, meaning you provide the procedure today, you have a certain amount of time before they, won't, they will no longer pay you. So you have to submit the claim within this time period. That's called timely filing. There's also a timely refiling or appeal of claims. If the claim is appealed and then you let a certain time period lapse and that time period varies by payer, you may not have the opportunity to file for that appeal if you waited too long. That is why it's important to number one, appeal every denial when you are legitimately doing the work and you should you have grounds to legitimately appeal that claim and number two you want to do that in a timely fashion and this is a systems approach you have to talk to your coders and billers and you have to constantly communicate with them so that you know how to document i hate to say this but you have to learn how to document in your electronic health records so that they can apply the diagnosis codes to a procedure or claim so that you can be paid in a timely fashion. Because it, believe it or not, it costs money on your end as well as on the insurance end to work these denials, to work these appeals. The best way, of course, is to have everything perfectly lined up with the ICD-10s and the CPTs so when you submit the claim, your staff submits the claim, it gets paid within 15, tw within 20 days. So my gross charges stays in AR in my practice is typically under 20 days, meaning from the time I perform the procedure until we are paid in full is less than 20 days. And that means, of course, we are collecting unmet deductible co-pay co-insurance at the time of service. Okay, lastly, if a particular payer is continuing to play games like this with you, with your practice, by denying these claims without any appropriate reason. You may want to engage the HR department of the patient, who is typically an employee of an organization. The HR department, when they hear a lot of complaints from the employees or from providers that a particular insurance company is playing games and denying pay payment and delaying care for their employee, which translates to possibly missed days at work, right? Missed productivity for that company, they will listen. They will take notice. When it comes to enrollment into a new plan or looking at a new plan in the future, they will think twice before renewing that contract with that problem insurer. So hopefully that helps you with how to work these PXDX denials from not just Cigna, but from any payer. Understanding the policies, working the denials, and also consider engaging the HR department of the patient or employee. Their corporation may help decrease some of the headache that we all deal with every single day. All right. As usual, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, agreements, or disagreements, please feel free to leave them below. Thank you so much for the privilege of your time. Take care of yourself and take care of each other. Bye-bye.